Hi, I'm Deborah Atkinson, and you're watching The Flipping 50 Show, the place to reset, tune up, and prepare for your second and better half with the energy and the vitality that you want. In every episode, I answer questions from women just like you about what they're struggling with most, and I give you the solutions to what to eat, how to move, and your time challenges so that you can get the most results in the least amount of time. Share your question or your challenge with me at flipping50tv.com. And if I choose your question for the show, I'm gonna share some gifts and goodies with you I'll tell you a little bit more about later. Even if I don't choose your question for the show, I'm gonna send you right away my Muscles in Minutes guide for toning those hard to tone areas. And if you have cellulite, you're gonna love it. Let's get started flipping 50 today. Today's question is from Karen, a school teacher, who writes, during the school year, I become very reactive to stress. I drink a lot more caffeine and consume chocolate to relieve my stress. How can I use my summer to get balanced? What needs to be in my toolkit so that I don't turn to caffeine and chocolate or sugar with such sad regularity and I can be more intentional about my health habits? Karen, thanks so much for this question and for partially giving us the answer to almost all of the obstacles that we all face. Knowing what derails you, you can start planning so that number one, you can prevent that derail from happening, but even if, and it will happen, you know how to get back on track. So Karen, today I'm gonna to use some of the information you've shared with me about what you're eating and how you're exercising during your school days so that we can really create the lesson plan for you as you go to school. You're a teacher. So Karen, we're gonna to go to the chalkboard in the front of the room and get started creating that lesson plan to make you successful. Let's go, school starting. Okay, Karen, time for school. We've got homework for you for both before school, during school, and after school. So let's address what you're gonna do every day before school. We're gonna hit either cardio or strength training before school. And I know as a teacher, if the bell rings at 8.30, you have to be there earlier. So we're not talking a great deal of time, but 10 or 20 minutes of either strength training twice a week or cardiovascular training intervals, short, high intensity, three times a week. That's gonna be your routine. So I'm not talking about a huge time commitment, but 10 or 20 minutes earlier rise time is gonna help you defeat and decrease stress before it even gets a chance to start. So here's what it's gonna look like. We're gonna do strength training twice a week. Say Monday and Thursday would be ideal. And we're gonna do 10 minutes of strength training and it's gonna look like this, a pull or a row exercise a press using your chest muscles and something that spares your knees. So you're gonna do a bridge using the ball. What I'm gonna really narrow in on today is showing you how to strengthen your knees so you're not stiff and achy there and you've got more choices that way about how you can exercise when you're relaxing, playing, or really wanting to work hard. And I'm gonna show you how to strengthen and relax the area around your neck where women hold their tension. So those exercises look just like this. Okay, Karen, so we're on the floor. We're ready to do the knee strengthening exercises, but I wanna be clear so you understand exactly how they fit into your program. I want you to do the knee strengthening exercises on alternating days with the neck exercises I'm gonna show you next. So if Monday you start with knees, the next Monday it'll be your neck exercises, but you'll do them every other day, every day. So here's how they fit 
These are strengtheners so that we can reduce the stiffness and the soreness you have around those knees so we can broaden the bigger major muscle group exercises that you can do and choose from freely without limitations about how your knees are feeling today. Right now, I've got you in the morning doing a chest press, a row, and a leg exercise that's a lift using a ball. I'd like you to be using weight-bearing exercises like squats and lunges, but not until we reduce some of this stiffness. So let's start with this and then pay attention to how your knees feel when they start to feel good going up and down stairs, for instance. That'll be your benchmark that, okay, maybe it's time to slip in some squats to your morning exercise as well as some of the lifts with the ball. Here we go. Watch my quadricep, top of my thigh, relaxed right now. I'm gonna squeeze that muscle, tighten it up, and then I'm gonna raise my leg up, lower it down, and release. So it's a four count exercise. Squeeze, then lift, lower down, and relax. Right now I'm propping myself up with my arm. If you've got some trouble with your lower back or it starts to fatigue, do this seated against a chair or against a wall so you've got some support there. You're gonna do that 15 to 20 times on both legs. And then gradually add the second set, the third set, and even the fourth set. So it won't take a lot of time, but it's important you do it regularly. Exercise number two. I'm gonna use a foam roller, just half of one here, but you can slip in a child's ball, a basketball, or even a couple of pillows will work. The idea is to get your knee propped up so that you've got some good flexion here. Make sure you're supported in your back again, and then lift up so you're straightening that leg up. Hold it at the top, still really trying to contract hard those muscles, and then release it down to the floor with the heel, but more importantly, release those muscles. So you're sending the signal to your brain to turn on the connection from here to here and making a stronger neural connection. And that's the real benefit of these types of prehab or rehab exercises. Release and then let go. 15 to 20 of those on either leg, adding the second, the third, and the fourth set over a period of weeks. And then you're gonna do one more exercise so let's stand up to do that one. All right, Karen, now the third of your knee exercises is this. We're gonna do a single leg squat. So I've got a chair here for balance. You're welcome to do it without one, but I'm guessing you're gonna want it. So find something, hand on a wall, just so that you can stabilize yourself. So you're gonna lift one leg up, and then as you come down, we're just looking for 20 to 30 degrees range of motion. That's two or three inches, a little bit lower, and then standing all the way up because that's what fires the muscles here. So while you're strengthening the muscles around your knee, you're also strengthening the muscles around your hip, which sometimes can be the reason the knees bother you. So either way, we're gonna get to the problem and solve it by strengthening either the knee or the hip. So you're gonna bend and come up. What I want you to watch is from the top, you should be able to see your toes all the way down and all the way up. So your knee is not going forward. This would be a don't do, and this would be where you wanna go. Your hip is coming backward, almost as if you're gonna sit in a chair. 15 to 20 of these. The other thing I want you to pay attention to, you don't have to keep your hands here, but make sure that your hips are level and that you're not hiking the other one up, that you're keeping them as level as possible and focused on doing that. So you're gonna sit, and stand, drive your heel into the ground as you do it. Wait on your heel coming down, wait on your heel coming up. Karen, those are your knee exercises. Next up is neck attention. There are three parts to paying attention to your neck. We're gonna release, then restore, and then do retraction. So we wanna release the tension that's already in those muscles first. You're gonna take one hand up, just on the side of your head, and encourage it with a little passive traction here. While at the same time, you're taking this shoulder and reaching down to the floor to expand that space between your ear and your shoulder. 
Hold that for 15 to 20 seconds, and you'll repeat doing the same thing on the other side. Think length through the neck, and then down and over. Then I want you to take a slight variation to that. You're gonna take your chin at about 45 degrees, look down your thigh, and your hand comes right in the back of your head. Gentle pressure down, and hold that one 15 to 20 seconds before you do the other side. That's releasing. Now we can restore range of motion. We're gonna raise your shoulders up. I want you to lift up as high as you can toward your ears. So we're actually creating tension so that you can relax just a little bit easier. And you're gonna set them back, rolling your shoulders back. Feel that opening across the front of your chest and do that again three to five times. Lift up, open through the front of the chest and set those back down, imagining sewing your shoulder blades right against your spine. Last, we're gonna work on retraction. We're gonna do that from the floor, waking up some lazy muscles that may be on vacation, causing your neck and your upper back to actually tense. We have shoulder blades sitting on our back just like this, right next to your spine. Only what happens, because we live life out front and or over a desk or a keyboard, your shoulder blades tend to drift out to the side due to those lazy muscles. We're gonna wake them up and pull those shoulder blades back in so that we alleviate some of the tension that's happening in your neck and your upper back because of these lazy muscles. What I want you to do is come down, turn your palms down to the floor, thumbs out, pinkies in toward your body. Raise your body up into a superwoman position, hold that position, and then lift through the arms. Draw the shoulders away from your ears and slowly lower the arms. So I want you to think about pulling your shoulder blades close together each time and do 15 to 20 of those per set. You can then come down, rest your back before you begin your second, third, and later your fourth sets. So Karen, these neck and knee exercises we've just finished actually help and support your power strength exercises that are your bent over row, your chest press, and your hip bridge on the ball. So that sooner they're gonna feel better and you're even going to widen and broaden your exercise selection so you can do more exercises like squats and lunges and fit those into your routine so that you feel stronger and more powerful all day, every day at school to tackle anything those students throw at you. So let's go back to the chalkboard. All right, Karen, those were the exercises. Now, we have just a few minutes before you need to jump in the shower and get ready for school. That's just enough time to whip up a quick high protein breakfast. Okay, Karen, so you've got a few minutes before you've gotta get ready for work, but you gotta get that high protein breakfast in. So I'm gonna show you a variation on a smoothie and we're gonna create a smoothie bowl. I've got all my things laid out and in fact, you could prepare in advance and put all these things into baggies and put them right in the freezer so you're actually ready to go in seconds flat. I've got my protein powder. I happen to be using Plant Powered Girl and I'm a chocolate lover. So this will be your stress-free breakfast. Plus, I'm using gluten-free oats. I'm gonna use some cacao powder, some chia seeds for healthy fat. So it's all in there. I And there you have it. Karen, we're back. So now, during school, here's what you've gotta keep in mind. That morning and that afternoon snack habit you've got is great. We just need to ditch the crackers, the cookies, and the muffins so that we've got more high protein, high fat to keep you satisfied, to keep you alert, and to offset cravings. Because you're starting really well with that before school, high protein, high fiber breakfast, you're probably gonna have less problems with cravings anyway. So those are gonna sound really good to you. In the afternoon, 
some vegetables, some hummus, some other types of nuts or seeds. Great options for snacks to keep you alert and offset cortisol and stress. So lastly, your lunch. You're doing great. You just need to make sure you add some protein and those leftovers are not without some thought. So we're gonna make sure we've got some fish, some chicken, something on top of that leftover or the salad that you're having for lunch. So you're gonna feel good, you're gonna feel satisfied. And because you're gonna to stick to that early morning routine, those cravings are not even gonna be as much a problem as they were in the first place. So you're gonna stash some things in your desk so you've always got armed and ready, great tasting snacks for a little crunch, a little protein, and a little fat. In the afternoon, maybe it's not nuts and seeds again, but it's veggies and hummus, something you can keep in the break room, in the refrigerator. Okay, so Karen, it's after school. The hard part's done. This is time to relax. You want your calming types of activities to be happening later in the day. Your cortisol level comes down, which actually makes you a little bit more edgy. So we want those long, slow walks that you enjoy doing to happen late in the day. Thinking about investing in that bike is gonna be a great idea. So you can go on a cruise and when you feel your neck is a little bit better, not so much in pain or you're not having those spasms, you're gonna be more likely to wanna to do that. Then let's talk about dinner, but let's walk. Carbohydrates are confusing, Karen. What I'm gonna suggest is gonna be a little counterintuitive, but I would like you to have some more carbohydrates at dinner than you did at lunch, and especially than you did at breakfast time. And the reason why is this, cortisol drops during the day, and when that happens, we get a little edgy. So by having carbohydrates for your evening meal, you help yourself get a little calm, relax, and get a much better night's sleep. And that means that tomorrow, your cortisol, which causes cravings, will be much more reduced. And ghrelin, which is kind of a sidekick to cortisol that says you're hungry, that hormone won't kick in. So remember that this is your after homework, but don't forget your before and during homework, Karen. So the key flip of the day is knowing exactly what is your obstacle and what is it that derails you. Think back about what has caused your possible failure in the past and look at it instead as information so that you can prevent it from happening again and make it instead a cause of your success moving forward. So for Karen, that was high levels of stress. So we're gonna use her nutrition and her movement during those school days to keep her stress at an all-time low and keep her in the teacher's seat. Thanks for your question, Karen, and let us know how it goes. Now I'd like to hear from you. Is it an obstacle keeps popping up for you over and over again, or is your greatest challenge in Flipping 50 something else? Send me your question or your challenge to flipping50tv.com, and if we choose your question for the show, I'll send you exclusive access to the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women online course and a copy of You Still Got It Girl, the book. Plus, my friends at Anne Marie Skincare will send you a trio of full-size products so you're gonna be beautiful from the inside out. Even if I don't choose your question for the show, right away, you're gonna get a copy of my Muscles in Minutes Guide to toning those hard to tone areas. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.